Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Can everybody hear Zach? Hi, Zach. Hello. Yes. yes. Cool. All right. Uh, welcome. Welcome back or welcome to the 2019 Vegan Festival Adelaide. Uh, really excited to have you all here. Turned out to be a beautiful day, which is great. Uh, we're really excited here to have our uh, plant-powered cooking demonstration tent sponsored by the Adelaide Central Markets. And we've got an amazing lineup of cooks. So some of you, I think, were already here a little earlier <coughs> listening to um, Nourish Food and Health um, Wellness. And now we've got Zach Bird from Melbourne uh, giving you a really hopefully fun, hilarious, and um, freaked out demonstration. I'm not involved. Um, <laughs> so, a uh, couple of little things. Um, we are, um, no, actually, I'll just introduce Zach and I'll let him get going and then we'll um, get any other information along the way. If you do want to recreate Zach's recipe that you that he's showing with you today, um, go to the festival um, vegan festival website. The ebook, our free ebook, is there with all the recipes from our uh, demonstrators throughout the weekend, and it's there online. You can download it, and it's uh, yeah, you can see the recipe there and recreate this at home. It's a great um, Halloween. Dish shall be prepared. Um, okay. Even if you try, you will not be able to avoid Zach this year at the festival. He's been around for the last week in Adelaide, uh, making the central markets um, uh, a really great place with some of his cooking classes. And we did a demonstration there as well. You will also find him uh, on our main stage even, uh, cracking some jokes, some even funny. Yeah, I think so. He's very funny. Um, <laughs> And, and later today, we better not forget, uh, well, he's got a kids demo as well um, in our kids zone. So he will be um, cooking up fairies, real fairies? Real fairies. <laughs> real fairies. Real fairies and um, vegan fairy, fairy bread, sorry. Hairy, Hairy fairy bread. Fairy bread. Yes, it will be funny. So if you've got uh, kids or if you want to pretend you, you are a kid just for a few moments, uh, come along. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... On a little bit more serious note, let's not get too much of that, but Zach is a recipe developer from Melbourne. He's been really busy this year with lots of exciting projects um, that he's working with. I'm sure he can share what he wants to share about that. Um, he's been teaching different foods um, for the last five years, cooking classes, lots of festivals. You might have seen him around. He's been doing lots of recipe development with some of the vegan companies and spreading the vegan word. He always throws in a really funny line online on Facebook here and now. Uh, just these little lines that pop up um, that with his vegan thoughts on it. So um, if you are not, or not already following him, uh, make sure you do on Facebook and he will tell you how to find him because it's pretty tricky with his name. Um, but uh, if you uh, want lots of his recipes, uh, there, he's got actually an ebook that came out earlier this year. It's called, um, get the name right, Me uh, Meals for Me Mortals. Obviously, you have not yet, Leonie. Sorry? <laughs> Obviously, you've not got a copy yet. <laughs> I've got the copy. I just, um, yeah, you had to give it to me, remember? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, it's called uh, Meals for Mere Mortals, and there's lots of recipes there. It's a great ebook. It's on his website, and he will tell you the website, secretarybird.com. Um, and yeah, let's just. So, one of his signature moves, and even he walked in before, and the lady goes, Oh, you did the Kentucky Fried Chicken, uh, not Kentucky, the CFC. CFC. Uh, Filthy Free Chicken. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, a guy. So, he's got lots of really interesting dishes. So, today, Mythical Meat, he will explain all uh, to you what it's all about. Hello, it. thank you. Thank you very much. So, I'm Zachary Bird, and this is Mythical Meat. I thought I'd kick off by giving a bit of context as to why Mythical Meat exists. So, I'm a recipe developer, and I primarily work uh, in plant-based meat in Melbourne, creating uh, new products for Woolworths and things like that, and I also write lots of recipes for you to make at home. Uh, and because I work in making plant-based meat, I often see people really pissed off at me for making my food too realistic or they don't really understand why I'm trying to recreate something I'm avoiding. So I thought that my answer to that would be would to be make to make the most unrealistic meat possible, which is why when I wrote my new ebook Meals for Me Immortal, I went down the mythical meat route 
and I started to make things like edible mermaid tail and unicorn steaks because no one can tell me that it's too realistic because they've got absolutely no yardstick to measure that off. I also thought I'd write a recipe that was a bit of an up you to people and I um because uh, people say spiders taste just like chicken and we know how to make vegan chicken, I made a deep fried tarantula uh, just so it wasn't too realistic when they were eating it and it didn't remind them of chicken. So today we're going to borrow some of the concepts from my deep fried tarantula, but we're going to put a bit of a mythical meat twist on it because it's Halloween coming up and I thought I'd try and make a little bit of an experiment. Not sure how it's going to go, but has everyone seen the movie Alien? I thought we would spread the love with some free hugs and try and make an edible version of the face hugger from the Alien series. So if you're not familiar, this is what we're trying to create today. And we're going to use things like uh, fake chicken and asparagus to make an edible face hugger with free hugs available for all. So I'm kicking off by using uh, one of the products that I was lucky enough to work on and help design the flavors for. This is the new Unreal Co. Meaty Mix that went into Woolworths about a week ago. And it's sort of like cake mix, but for meat, which I think is a really exciting development because you just add water, mix it up, and it allows you to create whatever shapes and dishes you want instead of being um, locked into things like nuggets and burgers. And we have enough burger patties on the market at this point. This way you can make things like roasts or tarantulas or edible face huggers. Uh, so this one is gluten free. It's also onion and garlic free. So it's a really cool product to have in the cupboard if someone with allergens are, is coming over and you need a quick dinner. And what I love is they put all the facts on the back about how much water and electricity you save by switching away from a, a meat-based uh, diet, which I think even if people are picking this up in the supermarket, we're getting some really cool messaging across. So I'm going to kick off by cracking open a packet of the Unreal Co. Meaty Mix. Uh, this is the gently seasoned one, which means it's got the least amount of flavors pushed in there, so you can add whatever you want and create something like a face hugger. So it's really just like making cake mix. You dump in uh, all of the packet and you find a bin, and it's just a cup of water. And all we do is add that in and give it a hearty stir. And that's basically the, um, the essence of the recipe. And it's at this point that I can add in whatever flavors I dream of. So I'm just gonna chop up some garlic because that's a foolproof thing uh, that everyone seems to enjoy. Uh, and as I mix this, I'm not sure what's visible on... Is that visible? Fantastic. So as you can see, it turns into mince pretty darn quickly, uh, which is very exciting. And as I do this, if I could get a willing or unwilling volunteer to come up, someone with a bit of artistic vision to help me create our face huggers, anyone willing and able. Fantastic. Please come on up. You will be my victim for the day. So kitchen etiquette. First thing you do is wash your grubby hands so you can come on over and help me out. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to very roughly chop up this garlic. And I'm probably just going to put a squeeze of lemon juice in. And because... Um, I like to make my food as fatty as possible, and this is a little too healthy for me. I'm going to be showing you a little bit later how to make mayonnaise from scratch, uh, which is the biggest money saver you'll ever um, encounter because I think veganaise is around $9 at the supermarket right now, and it costs less than 20 cents worth of ingredients to make a cup of mayonnaise. And we're going to turn that into instant tartar sauce, and you'll all learn how to do that. And then we will serve our face hugger on a bit of tartar sauce, and hopefully it looks somewhat like it's been given birth to. And then we'll all get to try that one. So what uh, was your name again? Yeah. Mich Michelle. 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 Okay, so Michelle. Fantastic. Michelle. I would like you to study this, because we're going to work together to try and create something that looks a little like that. So we're using asparagus to make the legs and its tail, and I put some soy sauce in a bowl here, and we're just going to brush that over to give the illusion of depth. So I'm going to chop this up. Would you mind, do you have a good idea of what we're creating? Yes. Fantastic. Would you like to get me out at least nine stalks of asparagus? You will be rewarded with a copy of my ebook for being a volunteer. Uh, so you're very, very lucky. And if anyone would like to purchase my ebook, it's on my website and there's a $2 discount code, which is my name. So if you can remember how to spell it, you are rewarded with $2 off yourself. 
if we have a look at this mint, you can see it absorbs the water quite quickly and becomes quite easy to work with. Looks pretty gross, which means we've successfully replicated real chicken already. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I'm not going to crush this garlic, even though I normally would. I'm just going to very quickly dice it up. Our asparagus spears, we're going to be turning into actual spears so we can insert them into the face hugger, just so you know what's coming up next. Uh, this recipe uh, for the Unreal Co. Meaty Mix often asks you to add in oil. You don't actually need to. That's a little uh, secret from me uh, if you pick some up at home. Uh, the recipes on the back were written by me as well, so there's some really cool recipes in there like Mexican schnitzel because you just mix in cheese and corn and jalapenos and then you bake the whole thing or fry it as um, a fillet and then you've got a really exciting dinner um, on offer. So I'm going to really crappily chop this garlic and just throw it in there. And I'm going to give a little squeeze of lemon juice as well, just because I love it. Um, what's really great about this product as well is you can add in things like protein powder and bulk it out to make it um, whatever you really like. This is almost pure protein. It's made from rice, soy, and pea protein. Uh, so you can double down on that if you really want to prove a point to people who still think vegans struggle to get protein in their diet which we all know is not the case whatsoever. So that's actually ready to go. You can release the spears over to this area where I'll be uh, working on them. And if we study our face hugger, I'll just remind the crowds what we're creating today, the face hugger. We can see it's kind of got these little flaps at the bottom. It's got like a body that extends into a long tail and we've got the weird little legs. And that's what I love about this is that you can make whatever you want. So in time for Halloween, or if you feel like a face hugger of, of an evening, at home, you can really put together whatever you dream of. So we're going to get really grubby with our hands. I'm going to leave it to you though. Okay. So all you have to do is start taking out little parts and we're just going to shape it however we please. So that's going to be one wing, I think. And then we just start building it on our baking paper. So I'm going to wash my hands and make you do all the hard work. And I'm going to get some of the spray and set us up. Alrighty. I'm being really liberal with my oil because I didn't even put any in there, so it doesn't really matter how much gets in, and we want to make sure that we don't screw this up and have it stick. So, would you like to start making our little wings? Because that's going to be on the bottom. And what I'm smartly doing is I'm putting all of the onus on my friend here, so if this goes um, arse end up, it's her fault, and you should address her after the show. Um, we've got our asparagus spears. Um, I did um, a bit of research into asparagus because a lot of people recommend that you cut off the end by giving it an uh, even snap like that. That's not the right way to go about it. Um, someone actually did the science and you can lose up to, I think, 40% of usable asparagus if you rely on that method. It's just really inconsistent and a lot of this is really edible and good to go. So I'm just going to come in and, oh, my friend Darcy's come to join us. Everyone say hello to Darcy. <laughs> We're just going to, um, with this one, I'm going to create it into a pointy spear end so that we can inject it into our mince. So we're spearing our spears and I just cut them just like that. So both ends are quite speary. And then this is going to sit out and once it's all baked, it's going to look like a grubby little egg. So how are we coming along here? We just need two, two wings. We're just making one large, just one large face hugger today. So the way that I like to do this is just to um, set up a little bit of a base here. Is this on camera? Where is the camera? Okay. <laughs> is this visible? Fantastic. So we're starting off with a bit of the winged base over here. We might move this into a more uh, visible area. And so what I generally do, that's a patty. What do we say about burger patties? There's way too many on the market. Please stop. <laughs> what I like to do is we want to create a sort of like a long body and then we'll go in with a knife or a fork and create a little bit of texture. So if you'd like to keep rolling, I kind of just put these together because when it bakes, it's all going to firm up into one full face hugger. And then I like to kind of build it just like that. So we can see the wings 
are facing the back on this one. So our tail is going to extend off this way. So if you'd like to keep going with that, we'll just kind of build up around here just to create a body because that's the main part of this. And the great thing about this mince is that it's so versatile. It's not You're not locked into like the minces where you can make it into a wristle or you can fry it as mint. This one, we can actually use our fingers to press it all together and um, create whatever the heck we like. So if you'd like to continue along there, I'm going to continue spearing. Uh, I'm a massive fan of asparagus. I've grown up in the last couple of years from when I was uh, vehemently against it. And now I love a good charred asparagus. Um, so when we bake this, asparagus at 180 degrees takes about 20 to 25 minutes to start to char up and become nice and cooked through. And the meaty mix, there's no real meat in it, so it doesn't matter if you undercook it, but it takes about 20 minutes or so to become a firm product. Uh, so this will be in the oven for about 20 minutes when we're ready to party. When I'm making the tarantula, I just have a picture of a tarantula in front of me and I just go, there's an abdomen, there's a this and all of that crap. And I um, hope no one with a biology degree sees it and corrects me when I'm done. That's looking stunning. It's looking a bit like a flying fish though, I'll say. Well, if we study our face hugger, it's somewhere between a flying fish, uh, a spider and a vagina. So if you could... <laughs> Just make sure we're capturing all three elements in our final product. I think we can build up a little bit. Like yeah, a bit of height, I think. We want to give him a body to attach to your face. Um, when I'm looking for asparagus, I usually go for the smallest, um, flimsiest ones I can, just so I can get that leg action happening. Um, what you've cleverly done is pick me the biggest ones that I can't use. So I'm going to undo all the hard work you've done and find something like this that's going to give much more of that leggy effect. Uh, if it's been a while since you've had a face hugger, because I know most of us are vegan here and we won't sort of remember what it tastes like, it does taste vaguely like chicken with tartar sauce. So this is a very authentic recipe. It really replicates that nostalgic taste that we all miss. I'm just going to continue in with a couple more legs. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. And I just try and match up the sizes so they're roughly even. We would hate for this to look unrealistic. All right, so just trimming that off there. Those are ready. And then we need our big, I'm going to take a big fatty for this one because we want that tail to extend. And I think that's what's going to trip people out when we're finished. So when I was testing this one at home, oh, that's fantastic. We're going to push those facing back. It's starting to come together. Can we, can we see this? Beautiful, wonderful. So would you like to rinse your hands? I know you're feeling uncomfortable. Come on over to our non-running water uh, hand washing sink and cleanse yourself. I'm going to clean as I go because there's a camera here and I don't want to embarrass myself at the end. And what I like to do it, I'll just take a knife because there's lots of ridges along the face hugger and I'll just press it in and push it along just so I start to get some bit of texture here. Now it's going to be blobby and gross, but that's what we're going for. And we're just giving a little bit of that ridge action without cutting through because we want it to be firm when it comes out and hold together. The hardest part of this will be making sure it doesn't fall apart as you deliver it to its final resting place. So um, the hard part is yet to come. Don't worry. Are you cleansed? Are you ready? All right, you're not done yet. We're going to, I'm going to add in our asparagus and you're going to come in with your fine art detailing and just wherever you see fit, again, let's revisit our friend. You can see those ridges and whatnot. We're just going to give a little bit of texture. Now, soy sauce is flavor-wise, probably not the best friend to this whole dish, so we're going to be quite sparing, but this is just for that drama. So that's yours. I should really pin this up. So the legs are all facing quite forward. This is really what I do at home. I've just got whatever I'm creating, and it's, I'm an artist, and I'm just, um, I think a sculptor says they're just removing everything that isn't the face hugger, and that's what I intend to do here. Thank you, Leonie. Oh, fabulous. Now we can <laughs> see it at all times. And anyone who walks in without the context, I can't wait to see what they take away from this. So I'm going to take my little baby pieces and we're going to put that at the front. And I literally 
just shove it in. And this has started to firm up enough that it's going to hold it. And as the asparagus bakes, it's going to start to bend a little bit and look like a leg, I hope. Beautiful. And what we can see is these are kind of far back and the legs kind of protrude from here forward. We are doing this correctly today. And I just make sure to pinch it in and make sure that chicken is holding it. So I actually, I'm sorry to undo your beautiful work. We're going to double down. And the thing is, screw up. Not that you screwed up. I'm not saying that you screwed up. Uh, but if you want to change it for whatever reason, you can just shuffle it around as you please. So I'm going to press that in so it's one whole piece and just attach that there because we're going to use that as the tail and this gives us much more room to hide some asparagus in there. Uh, people, parents are often looking for recipes that they can hide vegetables in. This is a great one. It looks like legs are not asparagus and the kids will be tricked. So definitely feed this to your children at home. Uh, they will love it. We're going to pop that bad boy there. The good thing is, if this falls apart, it's all delicious. And I don't know that there's too many face hugger recipes on the internet. So there's not really anything that people can measure this off. We've got these two coming through. Right in that thick body. Perfect. Now, shall I give you some more ridges? Or Oh, you know what? Why don't you paint it? Paint it on. Beautiful. I think um, the kids call it contouring. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. It's like a makeup tutorial, everyone. Take away tips and apply it to your face. We've got two more, and I'm going to get these right in there. And they're all facing forward, which is absolutely stunning. And all we need now is that big tail, and I'm going to shove it in its butt. No one quote me on any of these things. There you go. So we've got our tail. There's a, Oh, beautiful. I wouldn't even have gone that route. That's not, yeah, no, absolutely. That's right on point. Now, this is um, what the internet tells me is an exact replica of the face hugger. So we've got a second one right here ready to go. And all I need to do is grab my spray oil and um, give it a little coating. If I'm at home and I'm not trying, if I'm doing the tarantula, I'll cover this whole thing in lemon juice uh, just because it'll taste really nice. And lemon and garlic with chicken is pretty foolproof. Um, that's all I need you for. Thank you so much. Give a hand to my wonderful assistant. Come up and see me afterwards and I will send you a copy of Meals for Mere Mortals available on ZacharyBird.com. Uh, so we're going to put this bad boy in the oven and someone who isn't me is going to log what time this is happening. Leonie, that was addressed at you. Wonderful. So that's in at 180 degrees, and because I don't fully trust Leonie, I'm going to check the time myself. We're putting that in at 12.23, so we want that out by around that 12.45 point, and that's pretty much the face hugger ready to go. You can see they're really quick um, meals to put together, and this makes it really um, just easy to put something together, because before something like this was out, seitan is your real alternative to making meat whatever shape you like, but... Um, any good seitan that I've made, you need to steam or bake and then cook again, and it's a hours-long process, and no matter how good your final product is, it's never quite worth it. So at least if you screw it up, you haven't spent too much time, and these are pretty cheap. So um, that's the last time I'm going to plug the Unreal Co. Meaty Mix, now available at Woolworths for about $8. I would like another volunteer who would love to learn how to make mayonnaise hands-on. That was so enthusiastic. Please come on up. Now, once you start making mayonnaise at home, uh, it opens up so many doors because so many sauces that we all enjoy are actually mayonnaise-based. So things like ranch, uh, tartar sauce, Big Mac sauce is just mayonnaise with some gherkin relish, some onion and powder, uh, onion and garlic powder, and a pinch of paprika. It's really, it's it's not magic. So once uh, you start doing this, grab my ebook and you can see all the cool things you can turn it into, like aioli and those sauces I've mentioned. Now, what was your name? Esther. Esther. Lovely to meet you, Esther. Thanks for being here. Uh, so we're going to make mayonnaise, and it's super easy. Uh, some people like to use aquafaba. Are we all aware of the magic of aquafaba? It's brilliant. It's taken over the world. Uh, it's now in the Scrabble Dictionary. So if you've got a couple of Qs and Fs and Bs that you need to get rid of next time, slip in the aquafaba. Uh, home and away, put it on one of their episodes, uh, which they burnt 
but it was still mentioned, which is a real big win for veganism, I think. Um, I've talked up aquafaba, and now I'm going to bring it down. A lot of people use it in mayonnaise. I find soy milk is way more effective. I've gone through all the drama and all the testing, and soy milk gives you a thicker mayonnaise, and when you're turning mayonnaise into sauces, you really want the thickest one you can so it doesn't become quite liquidy and you still have some firmness. So your job right now is to give me four tablespoons of soy milk and pop it into this beautiful little cup that I stole from Lee's house. Um, when making mayonnaise, you just want a long jar. So this is probably the loosest definition of long jar. I go to Daiso. Do you guys have Daiso in Adelaide, the little Japanese shop where everything's two dollars eighty? If you go to a little uh, those little Asian stores or um, uh... <laughs> fantastic! Wow, wow! Do we have a different volunteer who would? <laughs> I'm kidding, Esther, you're doing great. Would we say four, four tablespoons got in, in the end? Okay, good, good. If you screw this up for me, Esther, I'll never forgive you. You won't get a copy of my ebook, that's for sure. Uh, so that's, we're done with the soy. I'm going to hide this. I'm going to take it away from you. I'm going to put it just over here, where I intended to put it in the first place, and I'm going to clean that up because this is a beautiful, beautiful cooking um, container that's been um, put on by Adelaide Central Market. Um, so we want a little bit of flavour in here because we're probably going to shock some people, but most people don't seem to realise that mayonnaise is oil. It's pure oil, and when someone um, makes non-vegan mayonnaise and they say it's whole egg, there's this much egg in it, and the rest is still oil. So Leonie, look away for this part of the demo because I know she loves healthy food. Uh, when I did my demo at the Adelaide Central Market, she wrote up my recipes for me, and mysteriously, the one teaspoon of sugar was just deleted. So um, I'm going to make sure that Leonie doesn't feel uncomfortable with how unhealthy this is going to be. Um, so we want to add a bit of flavour. So the trick is, I want three quarters of a teaspoon of white vinegar, and I've come prepared with a teaspoon measure. Um, a fun fact that you might not know is Australia is the only country that has a uh, different tablespoon that has decided to deviate from societal norms. And so everywhere across the planet uses a 15 mil tablespoon, but our tablespoons are 20 mils. So when you're following precise recipes online, like for baking, you really want to have a look at where the source of the recipe is. Because if it's the US or if it's um, the UK or just basically anywhere, you've, you've shot yourself in the foot before you've started and you should be trying to um, put in 15 mils for every tablespoon they ask for. We put in three quarters of an Australian teaspoon, and now we're just coming in with a little bit of flavour. And the flavours that we need is very minimal. We're going to be using quarter teaspoon of each, and it's literally salt, garlic powder, and mustard. And all we need is one quarter teaspoon of each, please. And then I'm going to prepare our oil. Um, some places recommend uh, olive oil and other nonsense. You really want the most neutral oil you can. So I've opted for canola. Uh, canola is often demonized by people, but it's really canola just means Canadian oil. And it's a, a variation on the rapeseed oil. And it's just been modified so that it has the perfect smoke point and is really good for frying and pretty much any use that you'd want oil for. So it's a beautiful neutral oil. And that's what we're going for today. Just making sure there's no water in this cup because that's going to break the emulsion that we're hoping to create here, which all is all that mayonnaise is. And I'm going to set up three quarters of a cup of canola. Beautiful. Is that all of the things that I've asked for? Wonderful. Now, you're going to help me with this next step as well. We have an immersion blender. This is the easiest, most foolproof way to make mayonnaise because you can control it every step of the way. If you do have a high-powered uh, blender at home, you can create it, but I'll um, give you a tip once we're done on how you can do that. But basically, all we do is give this, give this a little blast to make sure everything comes together. I put four tablespoons of soy milk, well, you put four tablespoons, or you've told me, we put four tablespoons of soy milk in here. If you do have excess aquafaba, just put in three tablespoons of aquafaba and one tablespoon of the chickpeas in the can just to thicken it up, and that should work roughly as well. So I'm just giving it a little blast, and you're on pouring duty, so if you'd like to grab our canola oil, 
So the trick is to start this off as slowly as you can. If you're doing this by hand, you normally will do one drop at a time, but this bad boy is going to make it go a lot quicker. So I like to pour it along the actual uh, stem of the immersion blender because it means that the oil pours right into the blades and it's instantly whipped in to the emulsion. So very, very slowly and just along this part. Yeah, exactly. As I'm running it, just pour that in. I'll stop sporadically and show you on camera what we're working with over here. But really, you just want to make sure everything's coming together. And the trick is to make sure all the oil is are incorporated before you add more, which is why we have a thin, steady stream. So if we pause for a quick second. Visible? Visible-esque? Yeah, so it's starting to thicken already. That's our base for our emulsion, and we've already left the danger zone where everything's incorporated and it's going to really easily take on more oil. So if we continue going, yep. And you just want to move the blade up and down a little bit, and that's getting air into the mixture, making it nice and fluffy. That's especially important if you're using aquafaba, because that's where you're going to get the fluffy action from. And I'm just going to make sure we're incorporating that oil first. Beautiful. Keep going, please. Actually, I'll show you now. If you see that that is quite thick, now we can move a lot quicker. So what I do at this point is just dump a little bit of oil on. Yeah, that's good. You can see it doesn't get mixed in and it's sitting on top of the mixture, which means when we blend it, it's just going to really quickly um, disperse it all through and you can really quickly um, finish off your mayonnaise at this point. Because when you're like me and you're making 20 litres of this at a time, you just want to get the job done. So keep going. Little dump of it. Yep. And then I bring it up. Try and get some of that out and then incorporate it. And then when I'm doing something like aioli, I put it into something like an ice cream tub and it's kind of like making whipped cream and it's actually really, really fun. Messy? Yes, please. Sorry? Um, it's messy because I'm over it at that point and I'm, I'm probably not doing everything I should. I'll just slow down on that. See, what we've done is we've got a cautionary tale to share with you today. What you did is go <laughs> way too quickly and what we've done is broken the emulsion and that's because it went in way too quick and there was too much oil to incorporate and it can't hold everything. So thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to very quickly restart this and the good thing is I've taught you how to do this super quick and you obviously remember it off by heart. So get your butt over there and we're going to restart this all over again. Is there somewhere, Leone, I can dump this failure? Um, if you're at home and this does happen, all is not lost. Uh, what you can do is create the base of your mayonnaise again, and then you just pour this in as you would the oil, and it'll fix itself up. But today, um, because I'm working with amateurs, we're going to pour this out and try it again. Yeah, just somewhere I can dump this and pretend this never happened. Thank you. All right. Four tablespoons of soy milk, please. Let's go. And I'm going to pour the oil this time, and we're going to swap, because that'll be a great learning opportunity for us all. So you're doing that one. I'm Sorry? Yes, four tablespoons. I'm going to get a quarter uh, teaspoon of salt, and just make sure some of it goes on the table. Wonderful. We want a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. She remembers quarter teaspoon of mustard. All right, I'll do all the work. Uh, there's a little bit more. And we're going to go in with three quarters of a teaspoon of vinegar. Shablam. Now, this makes about three quarters of a cup, just FYI. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. I'm going to give this a cheeky wipe. All right, back again. Can you please prepare for me three quarters of a cup of that oil? Beautiful. Now, would you like to blend or pour? You'll blend. Okay. Swap positions, please. You just want to make sure it's running at all times that the oil's entering. Beautiful. Yep. Keep it running. 
really nice and slow, making sure it's all incorporated. Yep, don't stop. Wonderful, it's getting nice and fluffy. I'm going to stop talking because we're not screwing this up twice. Wonderful. Don't stop now. Yep, keep going. Let's go up and down, get some uh, air incorporated. You can see it's starting to get too thick, which is fabulous. Wonderful. Yeah, and I kind of pick it up and just take it to problem parts of the mayonnaise where the oil's sitting and just make sure it all comes together. Oh, yeah, that's the sound we want. You want to sound aggressive. Wonderful. Yeah, I can see oil there, so let's keep making sure. I take the whole thing out. Just give it a tap. Make sure something falls out. Yep, there you go. Yes, wonderful action. And because we're making sure that oil's incorporated, we're avoiding the emulsion being broken. Yep. So this is now where we can do that. Shall I, can I just, for one second, you want to give it a, a, a hearty tap to make sure all that mayonnaise sitting below the blade. So it's all coming together. Back to you, friend. So it actually becomes so thick, it looks like uh, curds and whey at some point where you actually get chunks of it. But that's great because then you can incorporate more flavors um, and it'll all stand up really well. To make something like aioli, I just swap out the last quarter cup for olive oil and then just make sure there's a crap load of garlic in there and everyone seems to love it. Wonderful. Give that a big tap to get all that uh, mayonnaise sitting on the top. As you can see, it's all hanging in the wrong part. So tap, tap, a tap, a tap, in the wise words of Lisa Simpson's dance teacher, I'm going to just scrape that off for you. There you go. Beautifully thick, wouldn't you agree, Esther? Yep. Great. Make sure we get that incorporated. Do you see the difference how it's carrying all of that oil? And that's just, oh, beautiful. I'd say that you've successfully created mayonnaise. That's fantastic. And it's such a quick recipe. We can do two in the time that we need. Thank you very much, Esther. Come see me after and I'll send you a copy of my ebook. Let's have a look at how our face hug is going. Ooh. Can you smell it? I'm going to give it a little tapa tapa tapa. It's really nice and firm now. And I'm going to get a handle on what time it is. So that probably just needs five more minutes, and I need one last volunteer who would like to help me make tartar sauce. Shablam, come on up. Now, tartar sauce is one of the easiest, simplest things to make. What's our name? Jan. Jan. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Yeah. Wash your hands, please. Get over here. Hand sanitizer and water. Now, you can make a poor man's um, tartar sauce with just two ingredients if you've already bought the mayonnaise, because the trick is just 50% mayo, 50% finely chopped dill pickles. That is the basis for tartar sauce, and if you're in a pinch, you can pop that out and feel okay with serving that. So, how's your chopping skills? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good, she says. Prove it. Come over here. You're going to be chopping these dill pickles nice and finely. Okay. Again, any other volunteers up for grabs? I've really picked the worst of them, haven't I? <laughs> All right. Here's a couple of beautiful um, dill pickles. When you're looking at pickles in the supermarket, do note that you've got uh, sweet and spicy and you've got dill gherkins. And we want the dill ones who've got that flavor that'll contribute to tartar sauce. So if you'd like to chop those as finely as your heart desires, and I'm going to measure out our mayonnaise and see how much we ended up with. It's so thick and beautiful. And I'll just um, make sure to show us very quickly. Come on, mate. 
that's an after demo job, I think. We'll just leave that to balance precariously. So here's our mayonnaise in the end. It's super, super thick. It's probably thicker than you might um, dream of, but again, we're turning it into sauce. And I'm just going to see how much we've ended up with at the end of the day. Oh, well, that's easier to show you. There's your mayonnaise. And you see what I mean? It kind of turns into like that curd effect where it's sitting in its own clumps. And that's absolutely beautiful because when I press it down, it'll sit in the jar and um, start to absorb whatever flavors I throw in. And something like tartar sauce is best if you can make it and leave it sit for a few hours because the flavors of dill and lemon will really incorporate and um, become richer, just like most dips and whatnot. You definitely want to leave them sit for a little while. So we have acquired ourselves three quarters of a cup of mayonnaise and I'm going to dump it into this bowl. And that just means we're going to aim for three quarters of a cup of those pickles you're working on right now. And then we're going to add a little bit of extra flavor. Um, I've got a proper recipe for this, but when I make tartar sauce, I do it on the fly because it's so versatile. You really just want to make sure you add a little bit of mustard, a little bit of lemon juice and fresh dill. That's really all it needs to come together. So I'm going to search out our mustard. I'm going to start with half a teaspoon and you're going to help me by tasting and uh, figuring out what our final flavor should be. So that's about half a teaspoon of mustard. Uh, normally I put in a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice um, and these are all of those oceany flavors because tartar sauce is generally served with something like fish um, or in our case fried banana blossom which is another uh, recipe you can find in my ebook that we'll all be purchasing as soon as we're done. So I'm just going to add not that uh, seed but I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of this lemon juice and we're going to see how much you've done while well, I get dangerously close to your knife without warning you at all. Very smart. <laughs> Sorry? Okay, all right. Um, we want to continue going along. Um, I, I think we'll probably need all of these pickles. Yep, and then I'm going to crack open this dill. Now, when I ask for dill in a recipe, I do not mean this nonsense because a proper um, bunch of dill, if you get it from the Adelaide Central Market, our sponsors, is a big bushy bunch. This is clearly roughly one quarter bunch of dill masquerading as a proper bunch of dill. So if a recipe asks for dill, don't just put in this as a bunch. I normally double it um, because dill is by far my favorite herb. So Woolies isn't going to support you anymore, is that right? Sorry? Woolies won't support you anymore because you've been broken. I might have lost a sponsorship, but I never had, so it's fine. It is. <laughs> oh, that's a really good point. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. <laughs> no one record this. There's no cameras, right? Good. <laughs> uh, that's beautiful. Let's get some chunky bits in there because we're trying to make something gross. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, beautiful. So that's roughly three quarter cup. Magician, and all I need you now to do is just to um, finally chop up some of this dill. I'd probably go for about two tablespoons in this one. Pop that out there, and once we add that, we'll stir it, and you can tell me if we're happy with the flavor. Um, now let's skip the stalks for this one, just because they're not going to contribute anything to our final dish. But normally when they're making something like spanakopita, which is just full-on dill flavor, the stalks and whatnot can go in because of that rich greenness. Um, Whenever I smell dill, I actually, I, I just think of Greek food because I grew up in Cairns and there's, I had this very weird introduction to Greek food despite having a Greek family because their one Greek restaurant, you walk in and it smells like uh, fresh dill, but there's this massive shirtless photo of Peter Andre on the wall. And so I grew up assuming that Peter Andre was a Greek god, literally, and we all revered him. And it turns out his brothers owned the restaurant. So um, dill is great for Greek food. Peter Andre is not as um, tied to Greek food as I grew up assuming. Just a fun fact for y'all. We're going to go for two tablespoons of this good stuff, beautifully minced. Shablam. And another one. So can vegans say minced? Will Barnaby Joyce have a heart attack if I say that? <laughs> Very topical humor. Uh, so we're just going to stir that up and you're going to track me down. No, you can use this. And so we put in here fresh dill, dill pickles, mustard, lemon juice, and the mayonnaise we made earlier. So you tell me out of those ingredients, 
what you'd prefer more of. And I'm just making sure that's all incorporated. Remembering at home, if you leave this sit, it's going to um, rich, uh, enrich in, in flavor. Enrich in, in flavor? You, you understand where I'm coming from here. So this is our grotty looking um, tartar sauce. It's pretty, tartar sauce is quite chunky normally. It's got little blobs in it if you are doing like a, um, a version at home. And if it does look ugly, just call it rustic and people will pay extra. So it's absolutely fine. So have a little taste of this bad boy. Lemon? Lemon? All right. You're in charge, so I can, again, blame you as well as our first volunteer and Esther um, for anything that goes wrong here. And that's my trick at home. Just hold your fingers underneath and catch uh, any extra seeds. And we're all friends here. If a seed makes its way in, it's extra nutrition. Absolutely fine. Protein, we need it, right? Uh, let's give that a hearty stir again. While you taste that, I'm going to make sure our face hugger hasn't made a run for it and see if he's still in there. Stunning, I think. Oh, that asparagus has started to take on a little wrinkly exterior. So I think uh, it's about ready to party. So I'm going to take that out and plate it up over here. And so if we have a look, you can see that we have this disgusting looking monstrosity and we've created a face hugger. So all we have to do is normally I'd let this cool down a little bit, but who can wait? It just smells so delicious. So we're going to use this as the bed and I'm hoping it looks something like a birth. Just be beautiful. And we're just going to settle that in there. Are we happy with the flavor? Beautiful. Well, that's all I need you for. In, in her taste, so do address her after the show. Thank you very much. And I will absorb the responsibility for the tricky part, which is hoping that this doesn't fall apart as I plate it up. Generally, I would try and make it roughly the same size so it sits in the bowl on the tartar sauce and the asparagus legs um, pop on over, but that's just something you can break off and dip in. So it does work as a, a Halloween entree dish. Um, oh, that's beautifully firm. Oh, I don't have to worry at all. Here is our stunning face hugger. And all we have to do is settle him into the box. Oh, his tail ran away. Everyone close your eyes. Beautiful. All right. I present to you the face hugger from Alien, given birth to in a bowl of tartar sauce. So I'm going to take a happy snap of this one, and then we'll have some sampling coming around. Um, again, the volunteers are responsible for what we've created, so do address them after the show. Um, come and see me if you can't remember how to spell my name, but it's Z-A-C-C-H-A-R-Y, Bird. Bird is my real last name. I did not make it up because I do chicken recipes. I often have to remind people of that. Um, and on my website, I have so many recipes. I've also emailed about 700 uh, Australian wine producers to confirm if their products are vegan. And I've built a little database on my website. So you can be in BWS and type in Pinot Grigio BWS, and it should tell you uh, what options you have in front of you. So it's a really cool resource. Um, you can get my ebook, Meals for Mere Mortals, with the discount code Zachary. And um, you can find me on the main stage a little later. And we're making uh, Meals for Mini Mortals over in the Kids Zone, where we're making scary, hairy, fairy bread. So um, please come and. Uh, oh, okay, I won't take a photo. Thanks, Leonie. No, no, we will. Oh, okay. Um, thank you very much for coming out, and I hope to see you around the festival with all of the great things that um, we've had on. So thanks for having me, everyone. Sorry. Um, yeah, we will put it... Um Actually, we'll hold it up. Can we just put the screen on? If you want to have a taste, make sure to hang around. Um, well, we are taking, yeah. Well, no, you've got to be quick. We're going to just serve up a little tasting of this. Um, thanks so much, Zach, for this. This is really funny. And um, um, the, as he said, the, the product, the, there's so many different things out there now. It's so versatile, so you can get that uh, in different stores. Um, Come, just a quick reminder, we'll be serving uh, 
your little tasting on compostable plates. Make sure that you dispose of them properly. We've got lots of compost bins here around the festival. Um, make sure you come back for our next demonstration with Sarah Kidd, which will be vegan de um, cake decorating hacks, and I'm sure that will be lots of fun as well. Um, come and if you have any children, or if you want to be uh, like a child for a little bit, Zach will be, um, I think at 2 o'clock, will be, yeah, um, doing a demonstration in the kids' uh, zone, so he will be there, um, and you will find him on stage as well. If you want to have a quick chat to him, well, he's got another few minutes here while he's packing up. Uh, one of the uh, volunteers that I I've got talk shit about on yep. stage, <laughs> um, please come up and I'll send you a copy of my ebook to say sorry and thank you. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Zach.